I'm just making a quick video to show you guys uh, the new sharpening method or variation on the sharpening method that I've been working on lately. This is a leather uh, bench drop with a thick piece of leather that's been uh, softened by me taped to a wooden block. I used tape because it uh, leaves more pliability in the leather. Uh, I found that gluing it to the substrate um, ended up making the leather too hard and not compressible enough and I am looking for a significant amount of compressibility in the leather because I am I use fairly low um, edge bevel angles on my knives uh, in the range of 7 to 10 degrees typically per side and so I want a significant amount of convex in my micro bevel uh, put on by a strop if you if I used the uh, 20 degree per side edges which I never would but if I did I wouldn't I a harder uh, substrate would be or a harder leather would be fine because I'd want to induce much less of a convex on the um, micro convexing with the stropping on leather this uh, edge bevel was um, sharpened or shaped uh, with uh, first of all I cut off the previous apex by making a couple of passes into the stone like I'm attempting to saw through it very lightly I then, uh, oh, and at that point it reflected light strongly off of the edge uh, from a directed light source. I have a very powerful overhead lamp I use for that. I then shaped it on the 1000 grit Sigma Power Select 2 stone uh, until a light no longer reflected off of any part of the edge under that light. I then uh, raised the level of polish on the edge bevel by uh, using the Sigma Power Select 2 6000 grit stone which will um, fairly quickly uh, polish out the 1000 grit scratches. The Sigma Power Select 2 stones are great because they are silicon carbide with minimal binder which means that they are very friable and very hard with an abrasive that's significantly harder than the aluminum oxide used in most water stones. This means that they will pretty much cut any type of steel no matter its carbide volume in virtually the same amount of time which makes it very fast to use on any type of steel, M4, ZDP, whatever high carbide steel you want. This knife happens to be 440C with a custom heat treat by Joe Colton of Colton Cutlery, but um, that doesn't really matter. I use my Sigma Power Select 2 stones for everything because I also like the feedback they give. Uh, because I like to use very light force when I sharpen, so um, very uh, weak bond stones that uh, release fresh grit very easily under very low force uh, are best suited for me because I like to use a very light touch when I sharpen. Anyway, all that aside, uh, this is now a 6000 grit uh, edge off of the stone and as a quick uh, demonstration, I'll try and tilt this for you for the camera, uh, The this is um, the long, the long side on these strips of newspaper are the um, with the grain, so uh, you'll see I fairly easily push cut at 90 degrees straight down through that. But when I turn this to the across the grain side, straight off the stone, it has a lot of trouble making push cuts at 90 degrees across the grain on the. Uh, on the newspaper right off the stone. So this leather bench drop is loaded with um, Ken Schwartz's 16 micron uh, cubic boron nitride uh, emulsion. And in the emulsion aspect of this is really useful because uh, the water soluble base that the um, sharpening slurry is in uh, evaporates or, or dries. Uh, relatively quickly on leather, leaving pretty much just the abrasive behind embedded in the leather. And it's also very finely graded, so it uh, works quite well for stropping applications. Now, 16 micron, I'll note, is supposed to be equivalent to 1000 grit. Um, I've been posting on forums now a bit about uh, that the embedding of these particles into the leather and the pliability of the leather causes stropping compounds to have a much finer effective grit 
than their stated grit rating. So even though this is a 16 micron abrasive on leather, the actual apex finish it gives in terms of a balance of push cutting sharpness and slicing aggression behaves a lot more like a four or 5,000 grit edge off of a um, waterstone if you use edge trailing strokes and manage to deburr it carefully or off of a um, Spyderco fine ceramic rod uh, which gives a similar type of finish. Um, the bench drop has the advantage of the micro convexivity in, it induces um, at the microscopic scale on the apex leads to a much thinner uh, apex so that it's noticeably higher push cutting sharpness initially and that thinness means that even though it has a significant amount of tooth still off of the 16 micron um, it still has a lot of push cutting ability essentially because what you're losing in push cutting ability from the toothiness of the absolute apex you're getting back in terms of the apex itself being thinner and thinness of the apex is a significant contributor push cutting sharpness because you're pushing straight down into materials so I just demonstrated that this was having a little trouble push cutting um, newsprint at 90 degrees across the grain now I'm gonna strop this on the um, 16 micron abrasive on leather and after about 20 or 30 passes per side, uh, I will check again the push cutting sharpness. I'll check after 10. I'll show you after 10 that you basically will have 90% of it, but after 20 or 30, you get a little bit more of a consistent apex line, and it'll also serve to demonstrate that the coarser abrasive it makes, you, makes it pretty much impossible to overstrop. The idea of overstropping an apex and it ending up overbuffed or killing the edge, as people say, I think, I contend, is primarily due to using far too small particle sizes to strop with because it, you effectively have a tripling or quadrupling of the grit given the format it's being used in. So one micron abrasive on leather is acting like a quarter micron abrasive. So unless you plan to uh, use it on a straight razor only, on an EDC knife it's going to d very quickly destroy the slicing aggression. Um, another thing I'll note is that this effect happens on small particles on strops much faster on lower carbide volume steels and so people who strop a lot will tend to think that 1095 is complete garbage because it'll end up losing all of its slicing aggression on a one two or three micron abrasive on leather almost instantly whereas something like ZDP 189 which has a much higher carbide volume um, is able to take 10 passes per side without losing all of its bite but that's just because it's more wear resistant and so the strop is affecting it less that's not actually an inherent, that doesn't demonstrate anything between the two steels. So the problem is that if you take those stropped edges and try to do anything else with them, the 1095 will look like crap because its wear resistance will be, its edge retention will be ridiculously low because it's had all of its slicing aggression killed instantly on the strop. So anyway, that's an aside, but... So... I prefer to use a bench drop for this as opposed to hanging strops because I find it much easier to find the uh, edge bevel angle. Sorry, you'll have to forgive my chair it tends to creak when I do this because I uh, shift my weight. And the other thing that I'll note is, I sorry, I should have noted this earlier, is that um, you have to be aware that I cross my, and I think it's important to do this, to cross my uh, scratch patterns when stropping, because I find that stropping on leather, crossing my uh, scratch patterns like this, is the best way to minimize burr formation. So I just make one pass per side at with the um, edge bevel perpendicular to the strop, like this. So I'll make one pass per side that way. And then I at least rotate the blade so it's slant the blade so it's 45 degrees. So the scratch patterns cross. 
In a perfect world, I would do this at 90 degrees, but on most knives, you can't get a 90 degree uh, cross scratch pattern because the ricasso gets in the way. So that's four per side. And I'm using some pressure here, like, you know, a few ounces of pressure, enough that you feel the leather compress under the knife, because um, the leather surface is not perfectly flat like a um, engineered or machined surface. So if you don't press a little bit into it, you won't get the whole apex in contact with the leather all the way through the pass. So it will take much longer to achieve the results you're looking for. And you may or may not be able to actually hear the uh, sound that this is making. I almost slipped there. It's okay, it's only on one pass, it's not a big deal. Getting around 10 here. I'm not actually uh, counting as I would normally be because I'm a little distracted by recording this. I'm going to just make a couple extra here. These will be the last two for the moment, just to stop and demonstrate the results after about 10 passes per side. So that's about 10 passes per side. I would take a cloth after this, some any sort of microfiber cloth, and just uh, wipe any uh, grit that may have gotten onto the edge off of because you don't want to be transferring it to other things. So again, and almost there. a little difficult to do under the camera here. Try and line that up. There we go. So anyway, good enough demonstration that even after 10 passes per side, you're getting uh, pretty close to the ultimate performance that this will give. But it does take a little bit more than that. 20 is more like the minimal, I would say, to really get the performance. So I'm just going to make a few more here. So, again, this is across the grain. Let me see if I can tilt this. 
in a way that highlights that a little better. So anyway, you can see it's having no trouble. In fact, really, if you had steadier hands than me, which I typically don't, you can start probably doing push cuts away from the point of hold. My hands are not that steady, so that doesn't really work for me. And in case anyone is going to try and uh, argue that I'm actually going with the grain, uh, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be with the grain on the long side. So, you have a pretty good push cutting ability, right? But, of course, anybody can get that. The question is how much slicing aggression do you still have? So, I like to check this by taking a sheet of paper towel, folding it in half, like that, and then... making a few cuts into it. Let me see if I can tilt this so it's easier to see from your perspective. And so, as you can see, this still has a fair bit of slicing aggression has no problem making deep, deep cuts into a um, paper towel. So, now, we go, okay, that's good, all well and good, we're all happy with that. Now, we get into what happens when you take something like this method and start using these high push cutting sharp edges to do rougher work. So this is just some uh, corrugated cardboard from a package I got and I'm just going to make a few slices. The um, lack of force I need to do this is largely because uh, Joe Colton's blades are very thin and thin blades require much less, thin blades with thin edges and low uh, edge bevel angles require less force to make cuts. Now, the strange thing is, I would not expect a knife to be able to make those kind of cuts into corrugated cardboard and still be able to push cut newsprint at all, or across the grain, I mean, and yet, I just made a few push cuts, in, or a few slicing cuts into corrugated cardboard, and yet, pretty much every part, or almost every part of that edge, will still push cut newsprint across the grain at 90 degrees. So, make a few more slices into, and yet, it still push cuts pretty much everywhere on that edge. So, we'll make a few more. This is going to be really a tough one because this has the actual outside edge of the newsprint. So, which is a little bit harder to push cut. Well, I, I'm, I'm out of corrugated cardboard at the moment, so <laughs> I'm not actually going to be able to make enough cuts into the corrugated cardboard to be able to kill the push cutting ability. So, there you go. A 16 micron cubic boron nitride on leather apex slicing that much corrugated cardboard and still being able to push cut newsprint across the grain at 90 degrees. Pretty fun, right? <laughs>